Hello guys and welcome here to the Talladega Super Speedway. Today we present to you race number 10 on the Jell-O Cup Series circuit, the Geico 500. Starting on the pole today will be Luis Hernandez. Starting in second is Tim Horton. Starting third today is Sam Curtis. Starting fourth is Charles Sanford. Fifth is Joshua Scully. Sixth is Richard Johnson. Seventh is Eric Monaco. Eighth is Tim Randolph. Ninth is Alexander Rowe, the series point leader, I believe. And in tenth, we have the number six of James Qualls. Let's now take you to the starting lineup for the Geico 500 here at Talladega. Here we go. They make their way through turns three and four. Last time we were on a restrictor plate, we saw a handful of lead changes. We will probably see the same today here at Talladega. It's like, it's what I like to call a wild card race. As the pace car peels off, any one of these 40 guys in the field could win. Who will it be though? Luis Hernandez and Tim Horton lead them to the Geico restart zone as we are underway from Talladega. It looks like Tim Horton is going to grab the lead early here. He grabs it on the outside lane. Four wide, though, behind them. And Alexander Rowe up to second. He is the series point leader at last checked. Jonathan Reigns won this race last season. He failed to qualify today, unfortunately. That is a tough break for that team as we're going to go four wide for second. And Brad Stover will look to get it on the inside lane. And there they go again. They're going to make it now three by three. 3x3 three three and some 4x4 four four. all the way through the field as Tyler Rattree will push who is usually his teammate not today Nate Rattree with Roush today but he pushes his half teammate to the lead here now he will look to the inside but not get it the two teammates work together here and we got a wreck behind Oh, Brad Fusion involved. Jess McNeilson. Brad Fusion. That is a tough, tough break for these guys. Ninety-nine is the leader and they wreck it again. They wreck it getting slowed down at the stripe. Very early on so far and everyone is wrecking through the field. And should I highlight Landon Martin? real quick but we'll do that after actually we'll 
get you caught up on the top 10 after this. Let's go see exactly what happened. We mentioned the four wide racing would get to them eventually, and this is not going to work. And sure enough, the 38 squeezes the 14 down on the apron and just causes this huge wreck. And they go up into Stephen Thompson in the 7. Uh, Ethan Lynn goes hard into the outside wall. But where does Brad Fusion get involved? I think we have our answer. Just nowhere to go for Brad Fusion, and that is a tough break. That team in 33rd in the point standings, and they are going to get a last place finish today. That is just not good for them, as they need to stay in the top 33, and not to mention, with a win this season, they could very well make the chase. That is a tough break for them, and it will take a big hit on them in the points. We'll have to see where they end after today. Let's take you back to the green. We're getting ready to go back green here at Talladega. Take a look at the guys out of the race and the guys outside the top 33. More than likely going to take advantage of this uh, bad run by the 66 of Brad Fusion. We mentioned they're going to finish last. I believe there were only 8 points out of 30th entering this race. And that is certainly going to increase the gap for them to make up. Two go fast cars, top three. Well, Roush car leading the race, I should say. Nate Ratchery, Tyler Ratchery, Landon Martin, Joey Tip, Max Anderson, Griffin Lynn, Joseph Curtis, TJ Hanley, Eric Monaco, Caitlin saying they make up your top ten as we are back underway. Looks like the 32 got a good start, but Landon Martin... Tyler, yeah, they're going to go up high and try and make it work, but I don't think it is. Joey Tiff to the lead, and maybe, nope, 99 will keep the lead. And here goes Joey Tiff. He's going to look for it, and he may just get it. The 99 has no help. So Joey Tiff to the race lead. And Landon Martin's back there. Keep in mind, Landon Martin had to qualify his way into this race. Yeah, Landon Martin had to qualify his way in today. He's had terrible luck this season. So has the entire JBM organization. And for them to be running up front, this is definitely... Going to give him some momentum, hopefully. Here comes 17, Joseph Curtis. And he will pass the 65, send him a little ways back. And Max Anderson is the leader at the moment. Everyone fighting for that low lane. as Joseph Curtis will go to the race lead. And Griffin Lynn's going to battle for it too. He's got the 99 behind him and his teammate back there. The 42 of uh, Tim Horton. Look who else is back there. That's TJ Hanley battling to get into the top 10. It's the inside. Nate Ratchery will once again take the race lead here at Talladega. Our go or go home group running pretty decently so far. Landon Martin back there. TJ Hanley. We mentioned Landon Martin struggling this season. Let me tell you, they may not be going for the chase anymore. I think their goal is just to get a race win. Because the chase goal may not be very realistic anymore for some of these uh, go-or-go-home teams. See up ahead, there's Eli Bright. He came off the pit lane near uh, 
your Edmonton winner. He is struggling today. And the 99 gets a huge gap there. It's only going to hurt him. And the 13 is really going to shake things up here for these guys. Ninety nine wisely goes up high, so does the twenty one. Although the thirteen I don't think has much damage, so it shouldn't impact too much. You see all the guys getting around him on the inside and outside. Good work by the lapped guys to make quick work of him, or the lead lap guys to make quick work of him, and good job by Eli Wright to kind of hold his ground right there, but allow these guys to pass. And here come the leaders again, Trent Fusion and Max Anderson, the 2BK Racing Toyotas looking up front. Keep in mind, Trent Fusion won at Daytona, so he knows how to win these restrictor plate races. But he's looking for a second win of the new campaign. And right now, he's looking for the lead, and I think he's going to grab it here. And he will. Trent Fusion, the lead, your Daytona 500 winner. Keep in mind, he's already got six chase points so far. And those six chase points coming from his Daytona 500 win, he could add three more to that mix. Here comes the 32. He's going to make a splash in second place at the moment. He's fighting off all, all four lanes on this racetrack to try and get a run at the 23. Here comes Griffin Lynn on the bottom. His teammates are all all the three Chip Ganassi rides are running in this lead pack right now. Man, look at this. Top five just managed to get straightened out. And there goes Griffin Lynn. He's going to look for second... Right now, it looks like they're kind of tandem drafting here. Up at the front, and Trent Fusion will come down and block. Some really nice angles here from the Talladega Super Speedway. Here we go. Well, the one pulled to the inside and looked for the lead. Nah, he's just going to stay dead in the tracks of the 23, though. And now he'll look for the lead, as he'll be the only one with drafting help. Both those guys know how to win, as Griffin Lynn gets the bonus point just narrowly and you see ahead they're gonna have some lap traffic to deal with some damaged race cars and they're battling side by side they need to settle that one out 
and fast because someone's going to get hurt. Griffin Lynn goes low and he will take a few guys with them. And those guys are going to manage to sneak on through. And the rest of them kind of get stuck back there. Man, Griffin Lynn, we were trying to say earlier while those two were battling for the lead, Trent Fusion, Griffin Lynn. These guys know how to win these restrictor plate races. Uh, Griffin Lynn won it at Pigs Creek last season. With Joe Gibbs racing. And then, obviously, Trent Fusion this season in the 500. He got his big break. Man, as you look up front, there are a lot of guys in this top, or this lead group you would not normally see. This is why I call it the wild card race. I mean, you got Landon Martin up here, you got Tyson Aquino. You never hear of Tyson Aquino running up front, at least not this season. You haven't as the caution is out. Looks like the 27, Joshua Sicully. Oh, the 8 and the 48, just as we spoke of them. Wait, I don't know what happened there, but we're going to figure that one out too as we go take a look at a replay. Just a case of pushing in the corners here, and that's something you just can't do here at Talladega. Richard Johnson just ends up coming down the track, clipping Joshua Sakali, and that just about takes both of them out in this wreck. But let's fast forward just a little bit as these guys wreck. No one else gets involved. Let's fast forward. The 8 and the 48 had something happen. Not sure what's going on here. Maybe Brad Stover didn't. Or uh, Tyson Aquino, I don't think, liked the way he was raced by Brad Stover. Maybe, or something. And those two just go at it. And Tyson Aquino going to wreck his own race car in this. And Brad Stover also gets some damage out of it. Man, these guys need to just take a breather real quick. Let's take you back to the green. My apologies, guys. It looks like we kind of just missed the restart. Griffin Lynn is the leader, and it looks like it's a top six breakaway. Top five now, Tyson Aquino has not had much drafting help. Just take a look at the guys out of the race. Nothing changed there. This is very odd as, oh, Landon Martin's going to pit. That's what's going on. Pit stops right now, shaking up the race. The two Jip... Chip Ganassi guys running up front and leading the race. Griffin Lynn, Tim Horton. Tim Horton would love his third win of the season. That would give him the number one seed. If he could just get around Griffin Lynn. And I'm sure right now it's about helping your teammate. Joseph Curtis to the inside. He's going to break up the Chip Ganassi run up front. All three Chip Ganassi cars in the top five. That is an impressive day for them. That 42 won this race last season, but with Jonathan Reigns. Jonathan Reigns, we mentioned, not in the series anymore. Or, I'm sorry, he is in the series, but he's not in the field today. I'm... I made a mistake on that one. My apologies. As Joseph Curtis goes to the lead.
the field is all divided at the moment. There goes Griffin Lynn. He's going to look for the lead himself once again. He'll have his teammates back behind him. But not enough this time. Joseph Curtis hangs on. But into the corner, the one will get the race lead away. Because we got nine laps of racing to go. Griffin Lynn back to the race lead as it's a top three breakaway now. Oh, the 42 might have gotten hooked just a little bit. They keep it together. The one continues to lead, but we got lap traffic ahead in the 65 of Landon Martin, who was up front at first, had to pit, and that definitely hurt this team's result. And Griffin Lynn is still hanging on to the lead. He, he is looking for his second career cup win. And his first of the season, that would put him, it, or that would give him chase eligibility. And it would make him our ninth different winner in 10 races. So that would be very interesting as we look on back. You can see these guys are visibly not much faster. If these guys could just go single file, they would be able to make up a lot more ground on the three leading the event right now. Six to go. Griff and uh, Tim Horton stays up high with his teammate to give him the draft, and that'll that'll keep the 17 in second. How about teamwork right there by the two Chip, Chip Ganassi drivers? Landon Martin is up ahead. So is Joshua Sakali. Landon Martin could have an impact on who wins this race. With five to go. Keep in mind, Griffin Lynn is the only guy in this top three. I should mention, he's the only guy in this top three without a win this season. Joseph Curtis has won as he looks to the inside. And so is Tim Horton. If either of those two win, it would be their second victory of the season. Or, I'm sorry, uh, for Joseph Curtis, it would be his second victory of the season. For uh, Tim Horton, it would be his third of the season. Griffin Lynn thinking smart. He goes up high to avoid the 27. But the problem is, is now he's going to get really far ahead of these guys. And that is going to hurt him.
With four to go, Joseph Curtis, Tim Horton could catch him. In fact, they will because they are going to team up and draft. And you could just see the mileage difference. 190, 185 for, Tim, for uh, Griffin Lynn. That's going to give these guys a huge advantage. As you look up ahead, there's more lap traffic they got to deal with. And just as we predicted, Landon Martin will have a say in who wins this race. The one tries to go down and block, but Joseph Curtis is just too quick. And Joseph Curtis to the lead with three to go. Like we said, Landon Martin could have an impact. He, sur he sure is. He is pushing that 17. And that's going to keep the 41 and the, or the 42 and the 1 right behind him, looks like, with two laps to go. Keep in mind, Landon Martin is not battling for the race lead right now. The more these two Chip Ganassi guys try to figure out who's going to be pushing who, the faster that 17 can get away. Keep in mind, I should mention this, if the caution were to come out right now, we've decided for the restrictor plates there will be NASCAR overtime. So if the caution comes out, we will have overtime to finish the race as the white flag comes out for Joseph Curtis and one more lap to go. Griffin Lynn clears the 65. That'll set, that'll give him a chance at the 17 as lap traffic is ahead. This is going to impact everything. Richard Johnson, Ryan Monaco, James Qualls all up ahead. 17 goes down to block. And they get stuck in the traffic. It's going to be a matter of who can pull out in front first. Joseph Curtis comes down to block. But to the inside goes the one. And they wreck. They wreck across the stripe. <laughs> Tim Horton gets around it all. And he's going to win. Third win of the season for Tim Horton. As the caution comes out. Wow. We have to get a replay of that finish. That is the most bizarre finish, I think, in Jell-O Cup Series history. They said it before, checkers are wreckers. Oh, let's go see what happened. Oh, man, I said the lapped guys were going to have an impact on this finish. I did not anticipate that kind of impact. And it looks like, just, well, yeah, it just looks like the 17 just hooks the 93, and they both go down the track. Maybe even Joseph Curtis just saying, if I can't win it, nobody is going to win it in this group. They're lucky because they had, let's take a look at the telemetry from the previous lap. They had an 11 second lead over this pack. So lucky for them there because if not, Trent Fusion would have had his second race victory. You just take a look at it. They are backwards. Griffin Lynn is going straight and he's going to go ahead and get second. But Tim Horton picks up his third win of the season. Congratulations to him. Let's take you to your results and standings, and we will see you at Dover for the next race. Goodbye, everyone.